Good morning, everybody. Jennifer here, and we are in Cocoa Beach. Uh, me, Jeremy, Kay, and Grandpa, because they have this right here. It's the Dinosaur Store, a museum of dinosaurs and ancient cultures. And this looks super exciting. It's like two stories. Cannot wait to get in. Let's go check it out. Stay tuned to the end of the video for a very special offer. Jeremy's so excited. He loves dinosaurs. I love that the pillars are dinosaur bones. Ooh, this place is cool. Oh, wow. So I guess you walk into the store. You have all kinds. Oh, look at those fossils. That's beautiful. So this is really cool. So the store is the first floor. The second floor is the Dinosaur and Geology Museum. And the third floor is the Ancient Cultures. Cannot Indeed. wait to get in there. Those types of bones. The carpals are the ones that make up your wrist. The metacarpals make up the bones of the palm. And then you have the phalanges, or what make up the actual digits, with which you have proximal, medial, and then distal. So this is what we say digit one distal phalange, which means it's the tip of one of us is the thumb. Hmm. We just don't call it a thumb in most animals because in most animals it's not opposable. And that came from this chap. So what you're looking at is the first finger of an Allosaurus. Ooh, very cool. That would be 150 million years back, that particular animal. That's crazy. And that's not even the whole claw. This is what the claw grows on top of. The actual claw first would be the layer of skin that grew on top of this bone, but then on top of that is the actual keratin nail that makes up the claw, which would have come up to a point about right here. Oh wow! Starting in a cone sheath that would have been almost an inch thick. Wow! So when you head upstairs and you look at our horns, hooves, spikes, or claws on any of the fossil animals, you have to double, if not triple, the size to account for the keratin. Wow! Oh, I wish I was filming for the reveal, because this is actually really cool. Like, the door opens to a dinosaur! A Parasaurolophus. Did I say that right? Woohoo! I did. And there's a big sequoia in here. And there's, like, a wall of dinosaur bones. Oh, that's cool. And there's the sign for dinosaurs. What do we got? Look at how little this guy is. It's, um, Psittacosaurus? Satakosaurus. See, this is why I bring Jeremy so he can correct me for all the times I'm wrong. Okay, we're having a dilemma here because my theory is AGL. Just like you always do Mexico first, you always go left. Jeremy says you got to go right. So what do we do? Jeremy wins. So SGR. So whoa, this place is huge. That's so cool. Oh, there's dinosaurs everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's even little teeny tiny, little teeny tiny. What are they? Pterosaurs? No, what's that type of flying dinosaur called? Uh, pterosaur. Okay, pterosaur. Hey, I was right. This is really, really well done. I love how they have the big displays with the dinosaurs. There, I mean, there's literally like fossils just strewn about everywhere. And then they have little things. For educational purposes, this is, oh my gosh, look, he's eating him. Wait, let me get out of the light. That is the Torvosaurus tannery, savage lizard. And I don't know what the little bird one is. This place is so cool. There's like fossil fish here. These are all like different prehistoric fish that they have. They even have some little horseshoe crabs in there. I think horseshoe crabs did exist way back then. Um, but I'm not 100% positive. This is an actual meteorite. That's crazy. 
This is what they consider the earliest ever Tyrannosaur, Guan Long, the crown dragon, 155 million years old from China. This is cool. This is all fossilized plants. This is so neat. I mean, some of these fossils are just unbelievable. They're so crisp and clear. Crazy. Right and literally this has to be from the petrified forest oh and dad's even wearing his petrified forest shirt that's too perfect like to see these in real life like out in the sun and like some of these will sparkle like diamonds it is just i have to say if you are going to be was that in arizona i will not say it enough if you are ever in arizona the petrified forest national park is a must do it is a lesser known. It was not anywhere near as busy as like the Grand Canyon or some of the other uh, national parks we've been to. And there's so many different things to do. And just seeing these, like just where they fell and how this is real. This is what they actually look like. And especially when the sun hits them. Oh, mwah, I cannot recommend it enough. But also come here. Because this place is really cool too. And it's actually an actual 501c3. So it's a full non-profit. This place runs solely on donations. Um, and it wasn't that expensive. It was like $14 an adult. Um, seniors get a discount. And 3 to 11 children. Under 3 is free. And 3 to 11 was like 10 bucks or 11 bucks or something. Um, really great way to spend the day super educational the couple staff members we talked to extremely knowledgeable definite must do literally you have to look everywhere here like i didn't even see that dinosaur i didn't realize there was a dinosaur above me this is my favorite dinosaur just because i like saying his name archaeopteryx i can actually pronounce it correctly and it's fun to say and this is like what they really look like look you can even see the where the feathers were on them. So cool. I never thought about that that is just the bone of the dinosaur. Like my brain just always assumed that's what they were clawing you with. But after talking to the gentleman downstairs, he said that's incorrect. That's just the bone, which is like the bone on the tip of your finger. The nail or claw came out that. So he said you need to either double or triple that size. And that's what the keratin would be. That was the actual claw. Look, he's even smiling for the camera. He's such a ham. This is cool. They even have a bunch of all the small lizards and bugs and such. And it has a little bit about each one of them. Look at how tiny that one is. Oh, it was cute before it was eaten. This thing is terrifying looking. Would not want to be walking through the woods and run into him. Look, little Mesozoic frogs. That's crazy. Now, always be aware of the bright colors because that means venomous or poisonous. This place is so flipping cool. Like, you're gonna hear me say this like 10 million times. I love how they have this set up. Now, this is a very cool um, evolution to a lizard. This is called the Diplocalus, and they think that they evolved into these two boomerang-shaped horns because it made it more difficult to swallow, and that was its kind of defense mechanism to survive. And look, and it's like a literal bone. That's what it looked like. Crazy. Literally everything that existed during the dinosaurs was terrifying looking. Like, crazy. They gotta bring Germany with me for this. This is an Anomalocaris, and apparently this was one of the first existing carnivores. German's very excited today. This thing existed in the Cambrian period, which was 513 million years ago. This is pre-dinosaur. What's crazy, this is a colocanth. This same fish still exists. It has been swimming in, I don't know what kind of waters, um, I think rivers, for 415 million years. Now that I actually read the sign, there are only two species of coal camp that still exist today and both are endangered. So that's crazy that this thing has existed for 415 million years in some form. 
that's just mind blowing. So this is kind of the predecessor to the ostrich that we have today. This actually existed in Florida up until humans existed. So that's crazy. I was the guy who was talking to us at the front. He said, if you lived right around the time of the ice age, there was a greater than zero chance that if you left wherever your protection was, one of these would eat you. Oh, oh so we are rocks in Oregon. we're in a cave now. So they're showing all the different cave rocks and cave creatures. My brain kicks in every once in a while. Like these are all selenite crystals that form. These are so pretty. Wow, look at the size of this amethyst geode. That is stunning. Well, they have all the different, I mean, they have like a ton of different examples of like the fool's gold, different quartzes, all different kind of stuff. But this is so pretty. This blue aragonite. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. <gasps> the green fluorite's beautiful too. This one's kind of cool. This matramite, um, it looks almost like a fungusy, like soft type thing. They have some hematite. The malachite's pretty. Oh, that's a pretty green. This is so cool. I didn't even know this existed. This uh, purple kunzite. I was told I need to push the button. Push the button. Oh, change colors. they glow. Oh, yeah. the one in the middle is from Jersey. Oh, they're both from Jersey. These two are from New Jersey. Oh, it's cool. It's, I don't think the glow's really coming up on the thing. Well, that one, you can see the glow. Can't tell if it's really working there. This one. All right, these are Mayanites. Push it. Ooh, pretty. Oh, it's like purple. You can't tell because it looks blue on there, but it's actually bright orange and a dark purple. And I'm not kidding when I say look everywhere because there's just random fossils like recreated, embedded into like the walls at random intervals. This is very cool because now we're getting into more of a comparison of then and now. So these are all birds that exist today. Of course, I'm at the back of it, so you can't see any of them. But all of these raptors are alive and here now. Oh my gosh, this has to be the most adorable dinosaur I've ever seen. Well, I guess it's not a dinosaur because it's a bird. But a uh, pterosaur, I guess. Um, it is a Yiki from the Jurassic, 150 million years ago. Yeah, this one's cool too. We think this one is the, we think we're saying it right, Epidexipteryx. I still like Arche Archaeopteryx better. And then there's the Rehobinus. These are all cool, tiny little terror birds. And I say terror is T-E-R-R-O-R because they were all carnivores and they would literally eat anything they could fit in their mouths. Ooh, this one has teeth. What? Can you see the teeth? I was like, oh, we're back to the beginning. And then I actually looked and was like, these are all different dinosaurs. That's crazy. I love this. Dinosaurs are living among us. Birds. Okay, cannot compete. Let's see, move your hand. Me neither. Raccoon. <gasps> they have a trash panda. Oh, the raccoon. And then the rarest of all, the flying fish. So Jeremy said the ceratops family is all his favorite dinosaurs. So not like just the triceratops, just any ceratops. So this one is a chasmosaurus, a chasm lizard, but it falls under the ceratops. It's a ceratopsian. So it still falls under his favorite dinosaurs. And I like when you get to the big dioramas, the bigger dinosaurs, like it gives you an actual timeline, like with a visual cue of when they lived. So like, you know, the Tyrannosaurus was here and then here's where this Hasmosaurus lived. Look at how cute these little Sinoceropteryxes, I can say that one is, I love the Opteryxes. I just like saying that. Opteryx is such a fun word to say. So There's buttons. You can make his tail wag. That is amazing. I love pushing buttons. So just to put this into perspective, Kay is what, 5'4 now? No, she's actually 6'3. She's 5'4, and this is just the thigh bone of one of the sauropods. Not the whole leg, just this bone. So that is close to six feet right there. Then you still had the feet, the lower leg bone, the hip, the spine, these things were very tall. 
I mean, this is just one of the vertebra in the spine is the same height because it's raised up. So it's probably about the same height as Kirsten. Meanwhile, spin around. A human vertebra is about that big. We've been having a lot of fun just trying to say all the names like Sora Faginax, Sorolophus, Sorolophus, Camarasaurus. That does not look like a Camaro. Oh, a Utah Raptor! It's cool that they have one of these. I can say that one. The dinosaur rats are very creepy looking. Oh look, apparently there were demon bug praying mantises back in the dinosaur time too. I hate those. They are nasty and they will attack you if you get close to them. And I'm absolutely terrified of them. I've been bit, attacked and bit by one once and I was attacked by one a second time, but I was able to escape. These are teeth. That's crazy. So this is like the root area. So probably like that much would be, um, oh no, I guess this whole thing's a root. So probably about that much. That is, that tooth is bigger than my index finger. Like that's crazy. Paleophis coliseus. So this is Paleophis coliseus. Takes a few times when we get, it has feet. Aren't those feet right there? Right there, on the snake, on the body. There's feet, you gotta back up some. Those aren't fins, those look like feet. That's kind of cool. Um, whew, that's a big snake. This is like the size of the snake from the movie Anaconda, but this actually existed. And then we head into the dawn of man. And here's all the skulls from all the different types of man. Homo erectus, Homo habilis, and just all the different skulls from the evolution to where we are today, Homo sapiens. Very wild. I think this here is probably our closest relative, the Neanderthal. Um, they were a little bit shorter than us, as you can see. Like, this is a human skeleton, but pretty similar... Their, their cranium was just a little bit wider, very similar face structure. I'm gonna say it how I say it, stop making fun of me. Never mind, Jeremy's correcting me again. Why I bring him, we are no way, we're no way related to the Neanderthals, even though we look like them. Jeremy? I mean, we're related, but we're not like, it's not like homo, we're not like Neanderthal too. So this is like a different branch of the tree. So we come from the same basic tree, but then this is the branch on the left, and this is the branch on the right. And I only say it like that because he's physically on the left and physically on the right. But I mean, it's pretty interesting how similar the structures are. It's just everything's a little bit smaller on the Neanderthal. And now we're back to the beginning of the dinosaurs, and now we go up. Now we go up to the mezzanine level, the third floor for ancient cultures. Yeah, the door behind you will open. I'm prepared for this yeah. one, so I'm pretty sure the it one behind fun. us. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and the grand reveal that was totally ruined again. It's a baboon! These things are terrifying and they are nasty. And a jaguar! Oh no, leopard! Oh, this is cool. This is one of the Ethiopian hip lip plates. That's wild. That's like, that must be a smaller one because, I mean, they get huge as they stretch out. Whoa, this is cool. The Kuba tribe uses like a crossbow instead of a traditional bow and arrow. That's awesome. This is cool. They have a whole section about Africa. I think these are similar to the statues. They have an almost very similar one in Animal Kingdom Lodge um, in Disney. Wahina. Oh, it's kind of cool. I can't really look down, but you can actually get an aerial view so you can see the higher level. Oh, I never even saw that dinosaur up there. Whoa. Yeah, so you definitely need to at least look out if you don't look down. And because this is basically a bridge over the central area, like you can see, like this is the beginning area where we came in and you can really see the whole higher level diorama that you could just kind of see, but not fully from below. Oh, this is a very cool canoe. This is, these people are so skinny. Like I couldn't even fit a butt cheek in this canoe and they fit a whole body in it. That 
that's really cool. That's native money from Papua New Guinea. They have a comb. This is fantastic. <laughs> this is cool. This is an entire story carved into a storyboard. Oh, and this is a coconut carving. That's awesome. And now we're heading out of Africa and heading into the ancient Egyptian. And um, Anubis is guarding over the ancient Egyptian exhibit. Oh, they have a whole hippo. These things, oh, this is like real. This was a real hippo that they actually taxidermied. That's crazy. Can't touch this one. But look, you can actually see all the damage to the skin from when it was alive. That is so cool. And this is so cool. I love this. And now here's where we get into the Tutankhamun stuff. I think the way this is behind glass, I feel like this stuff, this has to be real. I mean, that's like actual jade. So this is not reproductions. Like this is actual gold, I think, or at least gold flaked paint. Um, so this is all stuff from Tutankhamun's tomb. So this is called the treasury room. <clears throat> and this is what protected all of the vital organs of whomever was buried, in this case, to in common. And this was kind of the, what is it called? Shoot, I lost it. This is the canopic shrine and the Anubis carrier that would actually help carry him into the afterlife safely. Although I feel like this has to be a reproduction because I believe the actual tomb of King Tut is still in Egypt. Um, so um, this, I believe, is a reproduction, but it's a very, very accurate reproduction. Now, the, this is real, for sure. Um, that's very cool. Yeah, this stuff is all actual real from Alexandria, all stuff from Egypt. Very cool. These were medical, these are ornament spoons, ointment spoons and actual pieces that they've gotten from Egypt, which is just amazing. Sarcophagus mask, ooh, that was a tiny sarcophagus. And look at this gilded throne. This is the throne of King Tut. This was the most elaborate of Tutankhamun's thrones and was made of wood completely covered in gold and silver with an inlay of covered semi-precious stones and glass paste. So this one is a reproduction um, because there's no semi-precious stones, but this is a reproduction of what his throne actually looked like. And in the back, I didn't even notice, those are actual pictures from inside of King Tut's tomb when they first opened it and discovered it. So that is very cool. So it's interesting how they have some reproductions mixed in with like the authentic things that they've actually found and gotten from Egypt. Ooh, this is cool. It's a Corinthian helmet. That's cool. Then this is an old Phrygian helmet from the Alexander's Great Army. Oh, well, they have some actual legitimate mummies. They have a mummified falcon, a mummified ibis, which is a type of bird, and a mummified cat. Oh, well, they actually have a copy of the Rosetta Stone, and this is what the app is based upon, Jeremy, not the other way around. So at the top, it has hieroglyphics for priestly business. In the middle, it has demotic everyday, really? The everyday script was demon script? That's terrible. And then the bottom was in Greek. It does not say demon, it says demotic. Oh, demotic, Never mind. I can't read. And now we're heading into the pre-Columbian gallery. This is cool. Look at the size of that jaguar. This is not, this is South America. Oh, China's behind it. There is a baby. It's so cute. Oh, China's that way. We're not in China yet. We're still in pre Columbia. So we're still in South America. So this is, is this Mayan? No. South America. Mayan, I think. Yeah. So apparently, back at Chicken Itza in, in Mexico, the Mesoamerican ball game, um, I guess it's just called the ball game, 
It's approximately invented 3,700 years ago. You had to get a solid rubber ball through one of these rings without using your hands. They were 20 feet above the playing alley, making it extremely difficult to pass through the hole. Okay, so it's not just Maya. It's This is covering everything. Inca, Maya, Lenka, Karchi, covering all of Mesoamerica. All right, so this is actually a replica, a replica replica of the top of the Temple of Warriors, a specific temple in Chichen Itza. Um, this was considered the only temple big enough to hold a huge gathering at Chichen Itza, and that is a representation of Chak Mool. It's a statue depicting a reclining figure with a bowl on its stomach used to hold sacrificial alterings. And they had thousands of Mayans would show up to watch the offerings placed into his bowl. So apparently this is a replica of the skull walls from Chicken Itza near the ball courts. And apparently back, way back when, in Chicken Itza, these would be actual human skulls in each of these spots. It was a wooden wreck where they would put the losing team's heads after the game. And now we head into ancient China. They have a mini terracotta army here. Now I'm very curious to know if these are from Disney because the terracotta army from Disney vanished when they put the Shanghai Disney in and these look very similar to those, <laughs> like very similar. Oh, this is a very cool um, ancient sword and scabbard from China made of bronze. This is cool. This is a bronze military helmet commonly worn by generals back from 475 to 221 BC. So these are actually Thankas, T-H-A-N-G-K-A's. They are a Tibetan painting, usually depicting a Buddhist deity. Um, they, or their exact age is unknown, but they are believed to be at least two to 300 years old. It's amazing that at 300 years old, I mean, the silver still glows on this painting. Like, it's amazing how well their ink has lasted. Of course, it is under very careful lighting to help preserve it, but very cool. This is very cool. They even have some bronze dragons guarding the exit. And these are like legitimate bronze dragons. These are amazing. I love them. Mushu, these are not. This is cool. This is an actual conch that they turned into a communication device and how they carved a fishing hook out of an old antler. And this is a really cool store. They have all kinds of like jade and some ancient Egyptian replicas. They have clothes. Oh, so much. They have some fossils for sale. Oh yeah, like tons of fossils. Jeremy can't see these little dinosaurs, all kinds of fun stuff. They also sell some of these amazing, like I would love to have an Archaeopteryx hanging on my wall. And it's not bad, he's only $159. Like their prices are pretty impressive. Like this guy is only $24, like that's crazy. So this is like um, a play zone they have, it's called the Adventure Zone. And this is, on top of this is a separate entry fee from the museum and it has like um, a raft ride that goes back and forth it actually has a reptile room it has some science interactive stations oh, arcade stations uh, sports stations and a movie day and a movie cave hey Kirsten what you stink ah! <laughs> look they have these cute little dinosaurs and they have some more realistic dinosaur plushes. And they even have sea cows. I love him. Manatees. Oh, wow. They even have real toxi toxi taxidermy creatures here. There's a lobster. There's my favorite praying mantis. They Look at the size of that cricket. Something like this, I'd understand if you need to preserve it. Over there. They also have a frog. Nope. That's a nope. Ooh, big spider. Bigger nope. Did you guys know Rebecca has her own dinosaur, the Rebeccaosaurus? If you like these videos, please click that subscribe button, tap the like, and ring that notification bell. 
so you always know when a new video is headed your way. Thank you so much for watching, and now we're on to the next adventure. Bye guys! Today's video brought to you by Orlando for Families. For amazing prices and even better customer service on all of your stroller rental needs for your Orlando vacation, visit them at the website listed below, www.orlandoforfamilies.com. Use the promo code OHANA to save 15% off of their already competitive prices.